What are the x and y values for the following system? y minus 15 equals 14x, and y minus 7x equals 64. And the answer choices are A, B, C, D, and E. So let's give you a chance now, if you'd like to, to pause the video, try to figure this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry about it, because we're just going to go over how to do it. Okay, so just to help us talk about this question here, I'm going to call this first equation, equation 1. This y minus 15 equals 14x. And this one down here, I'm just going to call this 2, just to make it easier to kind of talk about the problem here. So this is a system of equations question, and when I used to do a lot of in-person tutoring, I know that this is a topic that a lot of people struggled with. So if you, if you had trouble with this question, know that you're not alone here. And there are multiple different ways to do a question like this, but I'm going to show you what I think is a pretty straightforward way to do it. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this y minus 15 equals 14x, and I'm going to start by solving this for y. Now, if you're not sure what that means, all when I say solve this for y, it just means I want to get y by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. All right, the left-hand side of the equation, when I say that, I just mean everything to the left of the equal sign. All right, so basically, since I've got y minus 15, if I add 15 to both sides of the equation, all right, the 15s will cancel out on the left-hand side and I'll be left with y equals 14x plus 15. All right, so this first step here, I just picked equation one and I solved it for y. I got y by itself on the left-hand side. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to my second equation and I'm going to take this y that I'm underlining right now and I'm going to rewrite equation two, but what I'm going to do is take this 14x plus 15 and I'm going to plug that into equation two for y. And I know that this can be really, really confusing. So let me just show you what I mean here. All right. So I'm going to take equation two and I'm going to rewrite it. But instead of writing this y, I'm going to write 14x plus 15. And thank you for sticking with me, even though my handwriting is pretty hard to read sometimes. Sometimes I can't even read it. But basically, I'm going to have 14x plus 15 minus 7x equals 64. Okay, so good, good work if you're following this so far. I know this isn't easy. Now, what I want to do, and again, there are several ways to do this. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to subtract 15 from both sides of the equation here. So the 15s will cancel out on this side. And when I rewrite this, I'll have 14x minus 7x equals 49. So now what I'm gonna do, since I've got 14x minus 7x, and I'm gonna do 14 minus seven, and I'm gonna bring the x's along for the ride. All right, so 14 minus seven is seven, and I'm just bringing that x along for the ride, all right? and I have 7x equals 49. Now, how do I get this x? Well, since I have seven times x, what I wanna do is divide by seven. If I divide by seven over here, the sevens will cancel out and I'll be left with just x. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do to the other. So if I have seven x equals 49, basically I'm just gonna divide by seven on both sides here, all right? And I'm gonna get the answer to this, I'm going to have x equals 7. So now that I know that x equals 7, all right, the good news is that all I have to do is pick equation 1 or 2. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, pick one of these equations, and I'm just going to plug 7 in. All right, so what I'm going to do, let me show you. And I know, again, this is pretty complicated. Since I have equation 1, I already solved it for y. All right, I'm going to take this y equals 14x plus 15. And I'm just gonna, instead of writing this x here, I'm just gonna put in a seven, okay? Because I know that seven equals x. And I'm just gonna do the math here, all right? And what I'm gonna figure out is that d is the correct answer because y equals 113. Okay, and so I'm gonna put the written solution up on the screen and if you, like I said, if you picked a different way to do this question, as long as you got D as the right answer here, then you, you, you definitely did it the right way. So if you have trouble with this, you can take the time, take all the time you need to study this solution, maybe pause the video. And whenever you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. Consider parenthesis 11x plus 17 parenthesis 
parenthesis negative 2x minus 1 parenthesis, how could the two binomials be distributed? So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So to get this question right, you have to use what is called the FOIL method. And if you've never seen this before, then I'll, I'll break it down for you here. And even if you have, it's always good to get some more repetitions in. But basically, what I want to do here, the F in FOIL stands for first. So I want to look at my first binomial. So this is my first binomial. And this is my second binomial. And I want to look at the first, which is 11x. And I want to look at the first term in my second binomial, which is negative 2x. And it's really, really important to look at the negative sign here and to factor that in. And I'm just going to multiply them. So 11x times negative 2x is going to give me negative 22x squared. All right, so that takes care of my first. So now I want to do the outer. So for the outer or the O, all I want to do is I come back to this 11x and I want to come over here and I want to multiply it by negative 1. All right. And so when I do that, I get negative 1 times 11x, which just gives me minus 11x. Okay. So that takes care of my outer. All right. Now my inner is going to be this 17 times this negative 2 right here. Okay. Now, 17 times negative 2. 17 times negative 2 gives me negative 34x. Okay, and so I'm going to write that down here below this 11x. All right, because at the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 11, negative 11x plus negative 34x. So that's why I'm putting this negative 34x down here, just so I remember to do that at the end. All right, so that takes care of my inner. And my last, the last is just the, the two numbers that I haven't multiplied together yet. All right, and that's going to be this 17 and the negative 1. All right, so 17 times negative 1 is minus 17. All right, so we're almost done here. So the last step I want to do is these two terms that have x's in them, I'm just going to add them up. All right, so negative 11x plus negative 34x, that's going to give me negative 45x. All right, so the final answer here should be negative 22x squared minus 45x minus 17. Okay, so if there's any part of this that was confusing, just let me know down below in the comments, and I'm going to put the solution up on the screen for you that I typed out, and you can pause the video and take all the time you need to study this if you'd like to. This video's champion shoutout goes to a test taker who's preparing for the test and had some questions about the calculator. And so I wrote back and kind of gave a little overview here about the calculator. And I hope this will be helpful for whoever's watching this video. Basically, what you should know about the calculator is that there are five questions on the test that you can't use it for, but you can use the calculator for most of the test. Also, there's no guaranteed way to know exactly which questions you're going to get on the no calculator section. But the, the questions tend to be on topics like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents and square roots, scientific notation, fractions, and some word problems. But basically, I would really recommend knowing the order of operations rules. Some people call these PEMDAs. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And hopefully that'll help you out with the no calculator section as well as the whole test. Which of the following is false? A, a negative number divided by a negative number results in a negative number. B, a negative number divided by a negative number results in a positive number. C, a negative number divided by a positive number results in a negative number. D, a positive number divided by a positive number results in a positive number. Or E, there can never be a negative number underneath the square root. So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So if you're wondering if you're going to get a question like this on the GED, you probably won't. But the reason I'm taking up time on this is because this is actually really, really important stuff to know. Uh, this is actually really, really crucial to understand this. And right now I'm putting a box around B, C, D, and E because these are all true statements. So I would highly recommend understanding B, C, D, and E. Um, e is one that you'll probably just want to memorize, all right? You can never get a negative number underneath the square root. But as far as B, C, and D, just know that these are all true statements. 
And A is the false one here. So if you picked A, you picked the correct answer. A is the false statement here. So I would just recommend just making sure you understand that B, C, D, and E are correct. This next question is the hardest question in the video in my opinion. You can let me know down below if you think that there was a harder question or if you think this was the hardest. I'll let you try it now. Determine the mean, median, mode, and range for the following data set. 17, 22, 9, 1, 99, and 3. So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so let's talk about the mean first. So the mean is just another word for average. And basically all we want to do to find the mean is start by taking all of the numbers in our data set here, and we're just going to add them up. All right, so I've got 17, I've got 22, and then I've got 9, and so on and so forth. And then what I want to do is count up how many numbers I have. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've got six numbers in my data set, so I'm going to divide by six. Okay, so to find the mean, again, you just add up all of the numbers and divide by the total number of numbers in the set. Here we've got six. And so if you do that, you'll figure out that the mean equals 25 points. I'm just going to round to 17. All right, I don't care how you round as long as you got something close to this. All right, so now let's talk about the median. So a lot of test takers think that the median means the middle number, and it'd be really easy to just come over here and try to find the middle number, but it doesn't exactly work like that because the first thing that we have to do is we've got to order the numbers from smallest to largest. Okay, so basically what I want to do is take the numbers and put them in order from smallest to largest, and when I do that, I will have 1, 3, 9, 17... 22 and 99. Okay, and now in this case here, we have an even number of numbers that we're working with. So whenever I've got an even number of numbers here, what you need to do is you need to take the two numbers in the middle, which are 9 and 17. So I'm going to do 9 plus 17, and I'm going to divide them by 2. Okay, so again, for the median, all you have to do is you want to start by taking the numbers, put them in order from smallest to largest. And if you've got an even number of numbers, all right, you just pick out the two numbers in the middle and divide, add them up and divide by two. So in this case, the median is 13. All right, so if you got 13 for the median, you did a really good job. Now, the mode is the most occurring number. And actually, in this case here, this is a little bit uh, actually kind of a trick question here. Uh, but because there isn't a mode. So basically, if every number occurs just once in the data set, there is no mode. So in this case, there actually is no mode to calculate. All right. And now the last thing we have to do is find the range. And the range is actually pretty, is actually should be probably the easiest one, but sometimes it's easy to forget what the range actually is. So to find the range, all I do is I pick the biggest number, which is 99, and I pick the smallest number, which is 1, and I just subtract. So I do 99 minus 1, which gives me 98, and that's all I have to do to get the range. 